Now for the same design in DTF. It's also going on a black shirt. I had four of these to do for a little commercial. So, um, it's the Money Baby design that you've seen demoed in the DTG print. So, here's the film. This is the matte side. This is the glossy side. Um, we're going to print on the matte side, of course. And... Um, I keep some little tape up here so I can just easily just take down my edges. When I'm printing. But here's the film process. And be right back to bring you in on the screen process. Here's the screen process. I am going to bring the size back down on it. Um, since it's going on a kid's shirt, I'm going to flip it since it's going to be DTF. I already have my color layer settings right there. Um, so it's level two, level two and no changes anywhere else. This is actually really the standard, um, the light color shirt standard settings. It's the same. I just labeled it in case I need to make any changes to the presets. So we're gonna hit print here, send this first print job through. This is the color layer, as I mentioned. So with that in mind, it is, um, Just going to put down the CMYK part. Our print is ready to roll. So we're going to come on over. And we are going to hit print on this. It's, the design is already here. Um, that way you can see the design sitting up there waiting to go through. So I'm just going to hit print on this. Not a lot um, with the DTF, not a lot of print work at least. Um, so you get to see this part happening, the color layer going down. While that's doing that down below, I have my actual supplies. So I'm going to grab my um actual tray and powder this is some new powder i bought alongside some new films um i'm not going to use it today but i got this from garment printer ink i'm going to stick with the one i've been using which is the equal equal printing film and powders um that's the color layer out from the print as you can see the, the colors always usually come out so strong with the um, DTF uh, in my opinion it does so let's go send our white layer because that is the next step so we're with our white layer I do have a preset for that too and with that um, I got print quality on level one, white print quality on level one. Color is still there, but it's not going to print. I do have a 55 second pause in there because sometimes I get a little busy, but that gives me enough time to cancel the white, excuse me, the color layer before it ends up going back over the top of that. The white, I have it, um, the density on negative 50, the reduced white area is on a two, um, two to four. But I found with some smaller detailing, the white would drop out, um, especially when I was doing neck label. Um, so this was my way of kind of like putting it back together. But here we go. Let's do our white print. We're going to send it. It's creating a job. And if you're curious, this is the cost. 
um, of the white layer. 53 cents in ink, and I'll show you the cost of what the color layer was. It was 22 cents, so we got, what, about 55 cents in cost. Um, and then I do have my sheets added in, so when I need to know whole cost, I have the shirt set up and the actual ink um, and the film. All right, let's head back over. And now we're about to send through our white layer. So it's waiting on the screen, ready to go back through. So let's go ahead and send that in. The total turnaround without any pauses is actually pretty, pretty good. The longest part to me is the cure and the powder. But other than that, the inking part is pretty short. The white does so much better on DTF than it does DTG, <laughs> in my opinion. So now we're going to cancel this so it doesn't send through a color layer. We're going to let this sit a few seconds. I give it a few seconds before I powder. All right, so now that we got that part done, now we're going to cure and um, I did knock off the excess and this is how it looks before the cure so that's before um, that's the bat and right now it kind of looks like sugar so we're going to let this sit up here I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit on here to 350. I was still at the 338 from doing the DTG print. This is the t-shirt that's going on, a Guild and Heavy Cotton. But you kind of like want this to look like an orange peel. I'm going to speed it up a little bit so that you're not bored watching. Um... <laughs> the DTF powder cure. And so, let's do that. Alright, so now with it done, I am going to pull up a bit to it and see if I can zoom in so you can kind of see. Um, it's no longer the crystal form. It's actually very slick looking. It's hard to kind of ca capture. But when you hear people talk about an orange peel look, um, that's what they mean by um, it should look pretty slick um, when it's cured correctly. I did two minutes at 350 for the cure. So now it's a matter of actually pressing it. So I'm going to ditch my butcher paper because I don't need that anymore. But this is still a good piece of good butcher paper. Let me see if I can bring it to the camera and show you a bit how the orange peel looks. But it's like a slippery, sl there it is, like a slippery slick looking. So you want that going on. I'm going to bring my press down to 285 for the actual press onto the shirt. And I am going to ditch the extra part at the bottom of the print. The reason being, because I can use that later on for something else. 
actually print chest logos or something. Like that. Well, this is how it looks after the cure. So you don't lose color. It's so strong in comparison to the DTG. Um, and it looks really close to the screen. But here we go. I mean, I've already pre-pressed my shirt. But I am going to do my little center crease. My infamous center crease off the neck, two inches. Well, this one, yeah. This is a kid shirt that this one is going on. I'm still waiting for my press to drop temp anyways. I used to mount my shirts in that way. But for some reason, this got a bit more relaxing to do. Um, to actually do it this way. Uh, not quite sure why. Because I get burnt more actually going this way than I ever did going the other way. But this actually was a bit more relaxing. But as you can see, center center screen, I mean center crease. And once you start placing these, you kind of don't want to be moving them around either. I don't want to pick your position and leave it there since it's still kind of wet to the touch. And I do cover with something just in case it got, um, any of the powder on the outside of it. I damn sure don't want the powder on my press. But we're down to 318. I'm going to go ahead and press. By the time I get ready to do the peel and do the second press, we'll be down at 285 so we gonna do this first one most people say 15 I judge off of how it washes so that's 20 seconds on that one we're gonna let this one cool without messing with it a whole lot but we're gonna let it cool a bit and we'll be right back all right back for the final press probably should have moved this away from the table too It won't be final press right now. Listen. <laughs> Actually let it cool all the way down. If you're using the cold peel paper. So, I'm going to put this back in. And I'm going to press it again. Because as you can see, the corners were lifted. I don't know if you actually seen that on video. But corners were lifted. So, we're going back in for another 20 seconds. And this time, I'm going to let it 
Schofield. You all get to see the outtakes and the bloopers and all of that. Real time. So this time I'm going to actually move it away from the heat press. <laughs> there. I moved it away and we'll be back. Hey, this should be the finale. I let it cool for real this time. So I'm going to go ahead and peel it. And it's still pulling up. On the corner. I just seen it lift. Adjust my pressure a bit. I'm gonna grab silicone sheet. I usually cover it. Now that's heavy pressure. So that should be a little bit different. We'll see. And I'm gonna let it go for 20 seconds as opposed to my normal final 10 second press. There we go. And if anybody is curious, um, this, that is the sound. I don't care what anybody says. you are going to have some sound in here. Like, if you play in the negative spaces some, you won't... Like, anywhere that you see black in this, there's no black, actually, in the design. I'm using the shirt. Um, but as you can see, final, it stretches. There's no problem with the stretch. It's no cracking. I've heard people talk about the cracking with it. But as you can see, I'm going to step out this way. There is no cracking. Now, I will show you something. This was one of the first DTF shirts I did. And you hear that? That is loud. And this is pretty much was almost a whole sheet being used. Um, this was before I started using the negative space and knocking out colors. Because if I was to redo this now, I would pull out all of the black pixels in this design. And rid myself of the box and everything. But as you can see... It does have a sound. This shirt is like, I made it in September, I believe. So it's been washed and worn over time. So just think of it as the bigger the design, you are gonna get some sound. The more solid space in the design, you are gonna get some sound. Um, it's just really customer dependent. It's so customer dependent on how you handle it. Um, some customers do not mind. Some do mind a lot. They don't want to hear their clothes move. Um, I think of uh, direct-to-film DTF as sort of a one-off method. Um, I use it when I need to use it, not for every method. So there is like a huge debate going on right now about the usage of DTF and I am going to say firsthand um, use it as you see fit if you have customers and you test it on them 
or let customers like handle and feel your designs um let them see what it's like and let them be the judge because like i've mentioned you'll have some that's like nope i don't want the sound i need this shirt to be this 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 and this it's not really about the longevity like i said this is from september it's been washed and worn multiple times and i'm okay with the sound because it's mine doesn't bother me uh, when it comes to people requesting white shirts I tend to just stick with sublimation on the white shirts the reason being is for the most part um, there's zero hand to it I'm gonna shut this down but um as I was saying that there's like zero hand to the um there is zero hand not like but there is zero hand to sublimation so when I'm dealing with white shirts I'm going full in on sublimation um unless a customer specifically asks for cotton then I'm gonna go DTG with it uh Sometimes I still like, I jump into that HTV that he transfer vinyl and still make it happen. I haven't done so much as the printable transfers since jumping into the DTG machine itself. But that was a method. And to me, with the right paper, you got longevity. I have a client I did hoodies for two years ago and he still wears his hoodies on YouTube. So it's really, to me, come, it comes down to your method that you choose to use in making your designs and the customer as well as um, your overall process. How you cure it, how you, your materials, all of that. Um, but like I said, there's that huge debate on DTF is the new takeover method. I wouldn't call it DTF, the new takeover method. It's the takeover method for some people. And as you can see, I have white toner, um, direct-to-garment, uh, sublimation, and um, do rhinestones and a few other things. But I don't think DTF is going to take over. It's a, a, a one-off quick method that you can use. Um, I prefer it on things that won't be washed often, um, like jacket bags, um, book bags I've done that's not so easy to do with sublimation or takes a lot more work to do it with sublimation, especially with darker colors. So, kind of pick your method and stick with it. If I were to be someone just jumping in today since I research a lot, I would more or less along the lines be looking at direct to garment right off the bat if I had the money to go that route. The reason being you get a twofer. You can do the shirt in the machine or the film in the machine and do the direct to film if that's your choice. I would not be spending a huge amount of money on a direct to film machine if I got a DT unless I just started printing transfers like for everyone or needed to get 50 transfers out and needed to go with a roll film versus a cut film. So all of it comes down really to preference. So it's up to you how you do it. But if you have questions, hit me down below. Thank you again for joining.